I got egg on my face. I'll take it. I like yeah. it. It feels good. <laughs> Dear Shandy. Welcome back to another Dear Shandy Bachelor recap for listeners. I always want to say Bachelor in Paradise recap. It's close. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Almost there. <laughs> Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you today? I'm doing okay. How are you? Uh, okay is exactly how I am. That's right. perfect. I, I agree completely. This episode was okay. Yeah. Although that should suggest that this recap is not as good as usual. Because, That's right. This recap will be less good than usual. Because the episode we're working with is not horrible. That's right. That said, we'll do our best. We will. Speaking of doing our best, oh, I mean, we rough. rearranged the entire living room because I hated the lighting last week. Yeah, lighting is important. We it have is. a video podcast. What else is there other than light and video? Very important. And yeah. I am really anal about such things. Yes, you Whenever are. anyone asks me, like, how much work is a podcast? The first question I ask is, do you do video or do well, you want to do video? Like, I mean, if we didn't quadruples. do video, this would be like a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so housekeeping. Housekeeping, yeah. We're still in Edmonton, clearly. Yeah. I had opening night on Saturday. Which was if, amazing. Oh, thanks. If you uh, are interested in seeing the opera here, it's kid-friendly mm -hmm. and not too yeah. long. Which oh, I yeah. Can't, the latter I cannot one. say about every opera. That's true. I'll link out information below. So episode two kicks off with the ladies running into the Bachelor Mansion with excitement. Mm. It is exciting A to move into. I will admit. The day I moved into the Bachelor Mansion, I was like... The day I moved in, well, I didn't move in, but I visited the Bachelor Mansion. I was very excited. Yeah. It feels very iconic. Yeah. And in my case, I always wanted to peer in the places you don't see on TV, mm. but you're not allowed in those places. That's what you do in video games, too. <laughs> okay. So the ladies are raving about what a man Zach is, meaning mm -hmm. he's not a boy, despite his age of 26. Speaking of what a man Zach is, in that shower scene, Zach... Seems to have chest hair. Unbelievable. This was seems to. He has chest hair. It's, I, have, I have not seen chest hair in like seven seasons. I know. It's very rare. It's, it's amazing. Good it's, for him. Yeah. On TV, you don't see chest hair anymore. I honestly, like sometimes, like we, we, we do have several bachelor friends. Yeah. And I don't know what's going on, but like I've seen them without their shirts on a lot. Yeah. And I'm always like, am I the only guy who has chest hair? Is this like a thing that like, did we evolve? Did humans evolve away from chest hair? Yeah. And I'm like one of the last people. Yeah. But now I realize that that actual bachelor man have chest hair too. Oh, that's cute. You bonded with him in his chest yeah, hair. Yeah, I felt I, I actually, for me, this was the moment he became Versace. <laughs> In the shower. So, okay, so Jesse arrives. He addresses the ladies. He reports that Zach really did tell him he believes his wife is in that room. He says everyone is going on a date that week. This is a first. Usually they single out two or three ladies. I was one of those ladies on my season who doesn't get a date that first week. This was a thing that kept me on my the edge of my seat number one. I did feel this episode showed the producers are making a concerted effort to kind of throw in curveballs. And one of them is this. Yeah. You know, that is usually something they use. The two or three women who are not going on a date start to feel insecure and really panic at the rose ceremony cocktail party because all these other women had time and they didn't. You know, it's just this formula. Yeah. And they threw it out the window. They're like, everyone's going on a date. I think they're they're honestly in panic mode. They're just they're everything. <laughs> It's like, yeah, whatever we normally do, let's do the opposite. Yeah. Okay, so going on this first group date are Brianna, Brooklyn, Catherine, Mercedes, Bailey, Davia, Kat, Genevieve, and Kylie. Andy, you said my mom is right. Their hair is all the same. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... My mom is often right about the bats, except when it comes to who she likes and who she doesn't like. Oh, yeah. Sometimes she has strange yeah, choices. She has strange choices. Yeah, yeah. Like, she was really into Aaron. Yeah, she loves... <laughs> still talks about Aaron. I have to hear this. On the script date, we are joined by the celebrity guest is Lotto. 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 <laughs> is that pronounced like, 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 Lotto. like the Mega well, Millions? So like I'm Lotto? embarrassed. Okay, I have some confessions to make. First, I'll get it out of the way that before this episode, this is probably going to be a shock to a lot of you, or maybe it won't be, but neither of us had heard of yeah. Lotto. And we know that, that she's probably a big deal, but we just don't, we're not up on music. Yeah. Well, I, once you hit like a certain age, it's over. Well, so. it's it's certain kind of music. So anyway, I went down a rabbit hole of Googling because I felt like I needed to inform myself on who this person was. Yeah. She has like 9 million Instagram followers. Wow. Her big hit, Big Energy, has 42 million views Ooh. on YouTube. 
that's the official video. And wow. I'm sure that her fame extends far beyond even those numbers. Yeah. So we're just out of it. We just don't know pop music. Like I'll see these shows or like these award ceremonies where like, and now introducing <laughs> recording artists. And everyone's like, oh my God. This is, I'm like, I have no idea. Zero. <laughs> so she says she's looking for bad bitch energy. Mm -hmm. So of course, Zach emerges wearing a black leather jacket. I mean, that's classic bad bitch. Yeah. Lado says, first things first, to be a bad bitch, you've got to be able to dance. Yeah. So they all start dancing. I'm not a bad bitch. Oh, I like your dancing. Eh, it's not good. No, everyone saw in that Q&A that you danced. I don't care what anyone says. I like your dancing. Okay. In his ITM, Zach dances and is asked if he's a good dancer. And he says, nope, while well, dancing. That's, this was cute. Yeah, it was cute. A little bit of personality. And also, it seems like he's a good dancer. He's definitely a good dancer. So if I could dance like Zach, I would be, I don't know what I would be. <laughs> Probably the same. <laughs> So in now come former villainesses, Victoria F. Courtney Robertson, friend of the pod. I will link out our love fest with her yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. And Taj Wan, mm. the lady's assignment. So the ladies on the day, their assignment given by these villains is to walk the runway and assert their bad bitch energy mm. towards Zach, All right. I suppose. Yeah. Standard bad bitch <laughs> runway walk situation. Mercedes goes first and we hear Davia say that she's so hot she couldn't keep her eyes off her. Certainly, historically, they would not have necessarily shown women talking about how hot each other are. Oh, yeah, that's and, new. And how much they are just admiring them. Next assignment now is they have to tell a story demonstrating, I wrote, their bad bitchiness. <laughs> <laughs> Main thing that stands out is Brianna. That actually changes the, the nature <laughs> of it. <laughs> So Brianna talks about starting her own company and Mercedes now in her ITM talks about how amazing this is. So yeah. more girl support. Everyone loves each other. Supporting a lot women. of love. Yeah, it's cute. Andy, you said, I love how this is just a thing now. And that was my bad bitch moment. It <laughs> it's was like a fun. book report. This is what I did this summer. Yeah. I was a bad bitch. Isn't it funny how words over time just start to have the exact no, opposite meaning? Yeah, now no meaning. Bad yeah. bitch no like, longer oh, means anything so to me. Oh, that's so sick. Yeah. Sick Bitch. or awesome. Wait, is awesome ever bad? Yeah, like, oh, here's your coffee. Awesome. Oh. That's not awesome. Are you filled with <laughs> awe by someone handing you a coffee? It is true. And you know that people have said that before. That's not uncommon. I catch myself saying awesome. I, I say it all the time. I don't even care anymore. Oh. I've given in. There are certain things I surrender to. Yeah. I've surrendered to awesome. Yeah. Like someone will just do something for me that's like one little click above nothing. Yeah. And I'll say awesome. And I don't care anymore. <laughs> I've given up. Okay. Okay, so in the evening, we're back at the antique store. Right? They love the antique are store. Are held at this antique store. Yeah, they do love it. Yeah, so it's many a nice rooms. antique store. I, mean, I would like to go antiquing there. Yeah. Yeah. I have to admit, maybe yeah, we, we should, should go visit there. this Can antique store. we do that? Store. Catherine has her one-on-one -on -one time. He asks how she got to this point, And she says she dates very intentionally with a purpose. Mm, I liked this answer, yeah. even though it kind of wasn't yeah. an answer. Uh, they kiss. There's a decent build to this yeah. kiss. Yeah. With her saying, you're not just my friend. It was oh, hot. I like that. It was hot. Word watch one here. Yep. Catherine says, I love our little best friend thing as our foundation. Right. The, the foundation, yeah. but not, not, not the whole thing. <laughs> there's some other stuff. They had a, it was oh, a yeah, hot kiss. A, mm, yeah. I'd like to see some, uh, some chest hair on <laughs> Katie action. <laughs> it's Catherine. Whatever. So Brianna has one-on-one -on -one time now. He asks how the last couple of days have been. She says, super hard. She wasn't sure if she would be there if it weren't for that popularity contest, Rose. And mm, he you know, puts her at ease. He makes her feel better, says he's really impressed with her, blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, he says that he would love to kiss her if that's okay. If it's okay. <laughs> and she says she would love that. Oh, huh? what a surprise. Yeah. Isn't that so fun when it's all just discussed? It's yeah. Like, Shall we kiss? Yeah, if she's signed right here, yeah. an initial here. They kiss... It, this is a great, you know, it was a polar opposite to the Catherine kiss where that it was building. Yeah. It was like, yeah, we have this this best friend foundation, but you're not just my friend. And then they they came closer and That's closer. That's the way it's done. It was so hot. Yeah, they didn't, and, he didn't and, need to ask because it was obvious yes, that a kiss was there. It was organic. The fact that he has to ask Brianna mm. means that there's no kiss there. Uh, now we're at the contractual point in time where I should probably kiss you. Do you mind if I do that? Uh, yes, certainly you may. <laughs> Certainly. So, we, yeah, we weren't buying this chemistry, no, needless to say. There. Back at the mansion, the one-on-one -on -one date of the week goes to Christina Mandrell. Shall we talk mm, about I Christina know, okay. Mandrell? So, we missed, we missed the fact that she was the first person ever to have a last name. 
Well, we actually did discuss it. It just didn't make my I, notes. I didn't put it together. And I, I am of the age where I know who Barbara Mandrell was. Oh, I, yeah. Okay. I don't. I think she did a song, um, uh, The Midnight Oil. Midnight Oil? Is that Barbara Mandrell? They better get her right or else they're going to come after you. I think it's Midnight Oil. Okay. Yeah. So she she did that. Do you want to sing that? I don't. <laughs> I think the Shandies would like you to. I, I won't. I'll sing, but I won't sing that. Okay. So we were put in our she place. She was a big deal back then, by the way. She was like really? a Taylor Swift level almost. Barbara Mandrell. Yeah. I don't think anyone back then was Taylor Swift level, but this is out, out of control. <laughs> <laughs> but, but she was in the genre of Taylor Swift level. <laughs> she was Swiftish, <laughs> Swiftish as opposed to Swifty. Okay, so back on the date, Mercedes is saying the date was so much fun. She got a lot closer with the other girls, which is so great. Oh, man, wow. a lot of positivity. Yeah. And I'm okay with it. I don't need the drama. Of course, now cut to Tajwan descending mm. and interrupting Kat's time with Zach. So now Tajwan has mm. her one-on-one -on -one time. Mm. Do, 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 okay. Uh. <laughs> she says she'd be remiss if she didn't pull him aside. He has a good head on his shoulders, and that's something she's looking for. She'd love to add herself to the mix. He says he has to think about it. Okay, so now the women go and find Tajwan alone, and this is where Tajwan, I think, earns her keep. Yeah. Would you say? She got her pay. Yeah, because it's not super crazy that someone in Tajwan's position would then want to come on. Yeah. But usually... <laughs> <laughs> mm. No, it's not totally insane. No, I, mean, I mean, Nick went on Caitlyn's season. This and, was clearly producer driven. Like I mean, fully every inch of it. Sure. But I mean, I think what really sets her apart here is how she handles the women talking to her because yeah. they're not really confrontational. They're just like, so what, you know, what's your intention? Are you, are you wanting to join? What's going on? And she says that when she sees something she wants, she goes after it. But in fact, they missed their opportunity to connect with him. And it was painful to watch that day yeah, during the day. She's just stirring the pot. It's yeah. so boring. Who cares? It distracted me from an episode that actually was going pretty well. It's so true. Zach fetches Tajwan now. And then we cut to him returning to the group where he tells the ladies that he could not say yes to Taj joining. Cut to acoustic guitar. And Andy, you uh. call this the theme music of not being an asshole. <laughs> It's the same thing every time. It is. Every time a guy's not an asshole. I mean, and what was he going to say? Yes to this? Of course he wasn't going to say yes, but he still gets the guitar music. They really want to remind us that Zach is not an asshole. Yeah. But no one thinks Zach is an asshole. Nobody in the world Zach is thinks the Zach is an asshole. Yes. He's the opposite of an asshole. Yeah. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a belly button. <laughs> is that the opposite? <laughs> Just on the opposite side. <laughs> Caught me so off guard. Yeah, it's too physical. So now we cut to Tajwan in the other room, trying not to cry. Mm. Sorry, I'm not laughing at that. I'm just laughing at what she says next, which is bad bitches don't cry. And the producer oh. says, sometimes bad bitches cry. It's okay. Oh, so good. <laughs> so subtle. I mean, they want those tears. Those tears are valuable. Very valuable. Yeah. What's a tear worth? I feel like a couple grand per tear. Easy. It yeah. depends, right? If they're tears, like big tears or like just a stream of tears. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes the glisten of tears is also worth something. Yeah, that's yeah, true. That's, what, that's all they got out of her. Was a wet the eye. A, a wet, wet eye. She had What's wet that? eyes. 25 grand? A wet eye? <laughs> What I find funny is that the producer is trying to make it seem like it's a safe place. Like, don't worry, it's a safe place. Sometimes yeah. bad Sometimes bitches I mean, cry. It's a good, I mean, it's a good song. Yes. Those, yeah. yeah. It's like, was it grunge, grungy? Sometimes Late 80s grunge? Like early I'm hearing 80s. When cusp. 80s, 90s. Sometimes even bad bitches cry. Sometimes even bad bitches cry. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? Do you need a sip of water? <laughs> you went too far. Went too far. You were so committed I to yourself. I should have gone to head voice. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Is it weird that I feel a little bad for Tajwan? Okay, look, I know that she's, as you said, Andy, a willing pawn. Yeah, That's what you said. I don't feel bad for okay. her at all. I feel a little bad for her because I like obviously she's in on it. She was a total B. B am I allowed to say bitch? <laughs> yeah, you could say bitch now. She was not nice to the other women when they I thought were being pretty polite to her. She's a bad bitch. But I feel like producers preyed on the fact that she, you know, found Zach attractive, was interested in coming, even though they probably knew that he wasn't going to let her on. Do you and they really feel sorry for. No, Tejuan? I just feel like they they allowed her they. In fact, encouraged her to put her in a position where her self-esteem would take a hit. 
Okay. I mean, I agree with you. Okay. But come on. Okay. So Zach gives this group date roast to Catherine. I think Brianna thought she might be getting this one. Definitely. <laughs> she really earned it too. Brianna? Yeah, or- with nothing. <laughs> So the next day at the mansion, some of the ladies are having a girl chat about kissing and tongue. Yeah. Jess says, I feel like Zach right away will know if you want to use tongue or not. And Catherine says, I did not know that tongue was not something that was used in every kiss. <laughs> I loved this. That's great. I feel like for you, like as a guy watching this, I find that these girl chats that they're showing also in the credits later on when they're talking about farting. I feel like as a guy, this is probably fun to watch. It's great. You feel like a fly on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we want. They don't feel forced. It feels like producers are like, oh, they're having a good conversation. I don't think they said, let's talk about tongue kissing. It just happened. I also just loved Catherine's admission here that she didn't know tongue was not something. Yeah. It it reminded me of something that I would say. That's a reasonable thing to say. It's yeah. There's like a little bit of cluelessness, but it's also endearing in its cluelessness. Anyway, I liked it. Zach arrives to fetch Christina. And now Christina has her, I can't call her Christina. She's Christina Mandrell. She says in the car that she needs to know more about Zach's music tastes and asks what his first concert was. I actually like this question. Mm, Great. I tell you, Christina Mandrell is on point. What was your first concert? Genesis. Invisible Touch. Oh, Phil Collins band? You don't even know Genesis. No. Admit it, you don't know it. Sorry, Genesis. I was, no. She's gonna have that invisible touch. She's just something. You don't know that song? No, but I like it. It's a good song. That was catchy. I mean, it was a huge hit. Yeah, Phil Collins band, Genesis. After he was solo, he, he started a band. Oh, no, before he was solo. Phil long ago Collins, he's had some big, big huge. numbers. He's one <laughs> of the, so he's had some big numbers. <laughs> he has had some big numbers. <laughs> I can feel it coming. Yeah, 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 in yeah, yeah. I know that. And also, he was one of the rare and amazingly badass. Talk about badasses who also do cry. Um, <laughs> he was a drummer, lead singer, and songwriter. That's amazing. Whenever anyone drums and sings at the same time, amazing. Well, when you hear in the air tonight, I assume that's what it's called. You don't think, oh, the guy doing that drumming is also singing. You're like that's another drummer. You can't do both of those great things at the same time. I will admit I'm always impressed by really good drumming. Yeah, drumming is amazing. That's something that I I don't have that I could not comprehend how to do that. I would be off rhythm within like two drums. It would be like, doom, doom, off. (laughs) (laughs) I could get through two. (laughs) What was your first concert? Oh, this is going to be funny. (laughs) I just know this is going to be funny. Yeah. Okay, first concert that wasn't classical. Because I've been to, you know, yeah, yeah, from yeah. a young age, I was going to a lot more yeah, classical stuff. Classy dame. And operas and things. First normal person concert, I think, was Backstreet Boys. I knew it was going to be funny. I mean, that's Is not that, that funny. That's it's, actually really it's funny basic. for me, but it's very basic. That's super basic. Yeah. Uh, sorry. That's cute. Were you super excited about it? Were you screaming when they came on stage? No. You're like, yeah. No, I, I was never oh, a screamer. You were never a screamer. No. I like I that. I feel like that tracks. Yeah, that's cute. You were just silently appreciating. Yeah. When they first came out, I was like, woo. Oh. <laughs> I'm a wooer. <laughs> that's cute. Yeah, you do woo. Okay. So Nickelback oh. from Alberta. Yeah, Alberta. I'm and, being and, Canadian right now and pointing this out. Big time Alberta. That, that's probably the most famous thing that's come out of Alberta, I assume. I don't know about that, but okay. Well, let's leave it at that for now. But Nickelback, <laughs> diss them all you want. And they do get dissed. Yes. But Nickelback has been rocking since 1996 and still putting out hits. I think what struck me most about this choice, it wasn't like, ah, Nickelback. It was more, I was shocked that Nickelback stayed so relevant because Nickelback to me represents my high school years. Yeah. Like their big, big, big famous hit was when I was in high school. For Zach, it's like an oldie. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Okay, that's enough. We promised that whenever we did a first leaf ad, we would sing a classical piece of music. Yes. But what's sad is usually we toast with wine, but we don't have it here in Edmonton, which is sad. But we have a fresh box to look forward to when we get back home. We do. Because first leaf sends delicious wine to your door based on your preferences. And this cannot be overstated because 
sometimes maybe you don't know what you want in a wine. Who does really know? What percent really knows? Mm -hmm. Really knows? I actually think a lot of people's tastes in wine is often just like what they've heard and been told. I totally agree. It's academic. Yes. They're just like parroting stuff that people told them was good about wine. Yeah. And that's what makes First Leaf so great is they have a questionnaire where they gauge your taste based on foods you like and what other wines you've liked in the past. And then they curate a selection for you ship to your door. It's a great way to not only stick with what like the themes of what you like. Like yeah. normally I like a, a Malbec from Argentina. And I'd like to think that it nudges you a little outside of your comfort zone because it encourages you to try wines that you were never going to buy. And that has happened with multiple First Leaf choices that I've gotten, including Chardonnays. I used to think I didn't like Chardonnays until First Leaf told me that I do. You know you now. Yes. You taste a wine, you're like, this is me. I've learned about myself based on the wines that I've found that I liked that I thought I didn't like. Exactly. Yes. And now you could have other people learn more about yourself by giving them your First Leaf wine. So sign up for First Leaf today and you'll get your first six bottles for only $39.95 plus free shipping. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash shandy. That's tryfirstleaf, T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T-L-E-A-F dot com slash shandy to get your first six bottles for $39.95 plus free shipping. That is an unbelievable deal. Un Unbelievable. Tryfirstleaf.com slash Andy. Charlene, you know what I look forward to most when I get in the shower now? What do you look forward to, Andy? Using a shampoo with my name on it. <laughs> it really never gets old, does it? No. There is something about bespoke products of any kind, but I really do believe that hair products mm -hmm. should be bespoke because everyone's hair is so different. No two scalps are the same. And sometimes I'll see someone's hair and be like, oh, like what products are you using? People ask me all the time, like what products do you use? What works for me really might not work for you. And I know I've used shampoos that friends have used and then found that they didn't work for me. Yeah. There was one particular girlfriend who has amazing hair and I tried using her products. She only has to wash her hair once a week because mm. she has coarse, dry hair. That is not my hair. So custom hair care makes sense. And yeah. that's why we love pros. They have this online consultation. It's in depth and it talks about your hair. And we're talking in depth. Oh, yeah. Like they take it's, into account your zip code. It takes a while. Yeah, but it's worth it. Oh, yeah. Because it talks about like how fast does your hair get greasy? How thick is your how hair? How hard is the water? How hard is the water? What's the climate like where you are? All these things that affect your hair. And in my case, they've even suggested products that normally I would not have bought. For example, my favorite product from pros is something that in a million years I was never going to buy for myself, and that's a pre-shampoo mask. And all of Prose's ingredients are sustainably sourced, ethically gathered, and cruelty-free. And no big deal, they're also the first custom beauty brand to be carbon neutral. Ooh. That makes you feel good. I want to use products that make me feel good. In addition to having your name on them. It's all about me. <laughs> So Pros is the healthy hair regimen with your name all over it. Take your free in-depth hair consultation and get 15% off your first order today. Go to pros.com slash shandy. That's P-R-O-S-E dot com slash shandy for your free in-depth hair consultation and 15% off. So now they come upon a helicopter conveniently mm. and fly over LA. And of course, the ladies over at the mansion are like, oh, is that them on their date? Because producers, by the way, are like, look, ladies, look up in the sky. Why don't you all go look and point together? Zach now takes her to his childhood home. So oh. he's apparently from LA. Yeah. Should we have known this? Where there's a barbecue celebrating his mom's birthday with family and friends. And Christina Mandrell is chatting with his siblings. Seems to fit in perfectly. This of is course. not surprising. She always fits in perfectly. She knows how to do it. I got to say with Christina, the, I really, really, really like her. But it's like a 99.5% because 0.5, I'm like, okay, you're... Like, she's, she's a little too polished. She's too aware of the camera. She knows she's performing. Yeah. But it's also very solid. Yeah. It's a very convincing performance. Yeah. And it, you could convince me that <laughs> this is 100% who she is. I just feel like she's a little aware. She reminds me of early John Mayer lyrics. I think the song was comfortable. Mm -hmm. I think. There's a lyric in there called, she poses for photos that aren't being taken. Oh, that's great. Yes. And that's what I think of with Christina Mandrell, yeah. especially being a content creator. Yes. <laughs> she poses for well, photos that are being taken as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I get a bit of that from her, but I also can't like knock her for it because no. she's on The Bachelor. 
No, that she was cast well. Yes. Uh, why would I knock her and knock Zach for being all thumbs on night one? <laughs> yeah. I can't knock him, but no, no, she's good. Of course, the main subplot of this entire date is that Christina has a daughter. Sorry, Christina Mandrell has a daughter. Yeah, be careful. <laughs> and so in the evening, Zach toasts to family. Mm. Andy, you said next is football and frozen pizza. And he says that she blew him away that day. And now Christina Mandrell reveals that she does have a daughter. And Zach's like, okay. Great reaction. Mm. And she says that her daughter's her world. And now we get word watch number two. Christina says she's looking for her life partner, best friend, someone to do life with. He thanks her for her vulnerability, says it's a lot and it's scary. Mm. Mm. And she says she wants him to think of all the ins and outs because she's, quote, chasing real hashtag is that a thing it's got to be a hashtag are we just not with it enough i feel like this entire episode is making us seem old i'm gonna make believe i know chasing real i'm like of course chasing real oh my god what does that say about the times we're in that real is something that needs to be chased oh yeah that is sad yeah you're right thank why you why would you chase real real should be every day yeah no there's so you much chase dreams there's <laughs> But there's so much fakeness, so much non-realness that it's hard to come by. Yeah. <laughs> dreams. Nice. Chase Dreams. That was the guy's character. That was the name of a character on that show we watched. Oh. His name was Chase Dreams. Oh, yeah. That was great. Was his name Chase Dreams? Well, if it's not, someone it should be named. It was Chase something. Someone should that be named funny, Chase Dreams. The first season of that show was hysterical. Yeah. The other two. The other the two. The other two. Yeah. yeah. Highly recommend the first season only of the other two. It kind of went downhill. Okay. Inconsistent. Okay. So Zach in his ITM says he's always wanted kids, but this introduces a timeline real quick. And he doesn't know if he's ready for that. And he says, sometimes you have to be selfish. He goes, wow. and he walks off. Okay. Amazing. We have to talk about this. Yes. Amazing. This was amazing to us. We were very excited about this reaction. Yeah. Just because it wasn't. First of all, it wasn't AI. No. There was nothing he, AI about this The AI has been broken. In this episode. The bot is gone. Yeah, the, his reaction was really not what you would expect. You would expect at this point that The Bachelor would be like, that's great. I've it's always easy. wanted to be a dad. I get to be a dad sooner. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, and he's got so many women. It's like, he. it's not down to like three women where he has got to be really careful about what he says. Yeah. That's it's what, like the most honesty I've seen from a lead ever. What? Really? About this question. Ever? In my, well, I've only been watching for, you know, whatever, seven, eight seasons. I don't even know what's going on there. <laughs> okay. So it feels like a long time, but I think this is the most real I've ever seen with this question. Okay. I've never seen a more accurate response. He's 26 years old. Mm. How many 26 year old men in this country do you think get that on a first date and are like, nice, that's what I'm looking for? Yeah. They're not. Well, and maybe it's different if he were 45 or 46, because at that point, a lot of people oh, yeah. have already been married and maybe you separated. Might want someone. This is true. I'm yeah. talking about a 26 year old man. Yeah. You're right. I just love how he keeps talking about the timeline. It's like, yes, I want kids. I've always known I wanted kids, but. I'm confused. Like, this is sooner than I would expect. It really goes to show that he's taking the whole thing extremely seriously. Because if he yes. were just performing and Christina Mandrell were just, you know, a guaranteed rose, he would just give her the rose and be like, that's great. Yeah. I, I already know I'm kicking you off in week, whatever. He he was real. Yeah. Verzaki? I think he's coming. I Damn. think we found him. We really loved this response. It was just so honest. Okay, so back at the table now, Zach says it's a lot. He says he would be doing... Oh, I'm getting my guitar ready. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. He says he would be doing Christina Mandrella disservice by just saying, this is great. He says he wants to be honest with her. When he heard her say she had a daughter, a thought was he does want to find his person, but does that entail being a dad right now? But ultimately... Ring, ring, ding, 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 <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> Not the asshole music. He wants to get to know her better and offers her the rose. Mm. So you, uh, Andy, for a second, really thought he wasn't going to give her a rose because really she has a daughter. I really thought for a second. So, I, for a second, and I was like, no, no one can do that. No one can do You can't do that. It was just impossible. But he really, in his mind, didn't give her the rose. I really believe that he, if... No one was watching. He would have not given her the rose. What? Yeah, I do believe that. Oh. 
and and who's to judge him for that? No, I'm not judging. I'm him. not saying there aren't 26 year olds who would be delighted by that. There probably are. Yeah, but I know he's not one of them. I mean, he made it clear. He made it abundantly clear. Yes. He said it with his face immediately. Yeah. And you know what? That goes a long way with us, clearly. This was a Verzaki moment. Yeah. We were extremely into this. Yeah. It just felt so real. That's what we it always want. refreshing. Want. That's what bothered us about for family f- f- football, football frozen pizza. Nice. <laughs> it's just, it felt like there's got to be more to you than this. How is this all that there is to learn about you. And Zach yeah. is just a regular guy who really wants to find his forever person. How different was that from this or this from that? And they maybe. tried to cubbyhole him, but he said, no, I'm going to be a little different. <laughs> He's like, for Zach. <laughs> it's just a big V on his <laughs> chest. <laughs> or is it a Z? Oh, that's true. That's you, true. It'd be more appropriate if it was a Z. Yeah. Are you trying to skip over the fact that I just said Z? No, I'll let you have it. I've accepted Zed. We agree that ultimately this was a very mature and well-handled conversation. Both sides. Yes. Yeah. Christina too. She was very understanding of the fact understanding that- Understanding yeah. that he might not be into it. Yes. And not, not like, oh, wait, you're not into this? Like judging him? No, mm-hmm. she was like, I get it. I know this is a big thing and mm-hmm. I know you may not be into this. And I honestly think if he said he wasn't into it and didn't give her a rose, she would have taken it well. Well, Christina Mandrell is on. She's on. As we see later on in this episode, actually. Yeah. She's never off. Never. She's always ready. Flick? Always. <laughs> Let's flick. That's a light switch. <laughs> that wasn't clear at all. That could have been a hundred thousand things other than a light switch. Okay, so now it's the second group date. Interestingly, it's only the evening. We have to talk about this for a second. Yeah. Everyone's all excited about the group date. And then it's suddenly evening and they're walking into a cocktail party setting. What the hell happened to the day portion of this date? Something really bad. Do you think that something like they had a date and then it got cut? Or something or got canceled? Something went wrong? Yeah, maybe some a tornado came through. I don't know. I just find it odd that they didn't even address it. Because in the past, if a group date is canceled for logistical reasons, then they'll talk about it and then do board games inside a hotel suite instead or something. They'll just do something. Yeah. And crucially, this is episode two. So it's the first week of dates. So usually this, these are the flashiest dates of the yeah. entire season. And usually you're like at a big football stadium or mm. you're joined by Lotto. <laughs> so it just really stuck out to me that something must have happened. I think they filmed it and it was not good for some reason and they canned it. Ooh, because if they good. didn't film it, if there was, was a weather event, for mm-hmm. example, like a big rainstorm or mudslides, they would have just done, as you said, played board games or yeah. had like a fun thing in the house. But they didn't do that. Mm-hmm. So they must have had something. And they're like, nah. OK, so this cocktail party is held in Zach's backyard mm-hmm. and Ariel gets one on one time first. She has them each write down their biggest fears in coming there. Hers is having her heart broken. She said she had a hard time recovering from her last heartbreak. And now we get word watch number three. Zach says, My biggest fear is that, you know, I like really fall for someone that's not being here to find a true best friend. (laughs) (laughs) We know what he means. Yeah. And now Ariel says she wants to write down another. And then after writing it down, she asks him to read it. And it says, I'm afraid that I won't be kissed by Zach tonight. Right. And he's like, oh. We can take care of that. Mm -hmm. And then they make out and it's pretty hot. What was interesting about this conversation is it was actually, in terms of substance, extremely basic. It's like, what's your fear? Getting my heart broken. What's your fear that the person's here for the wrong reasons? What's your fear that I'm not kissed by you tonight? Like it was actually extremely like 101. Yeah. But Something about Ariel is really like sophisticated feeling. She seems very sultry. She doesn't laugh a lot. She doesn't? No, she doesn't do a lot of nervous laughter. She's just kind of very Which is appealing. Steady. Yeah. I mean, I said last week that I like her voice and she's there's something sultry about Ariel. That's the word that comes to mind. I agree. So even though the conversation itself struck me as very, very basic, I was like, oh, this conversation, my goodness. Delivery. So Greer has her one-on-one time now. Not much conversation shown, just mostly making out. Mm. Katie or Kaiti. We have to talk about this. Oh, yeah. We didn't know. I, I Apparently, we're out to lunch. Katie, her spelling is short for Caitlin, which, well, of course, yeah. that's a normal spelling for Caitlin. Well, I'm aware of Caitlin, but I didn't know that 
just because your name is spelled K-A-I-T-L-Y-N, yeah. your short name is also K-A-I-T-Y. I figured if you do a short name, you might as well make it even shorter, make it K-A-T-Y. What I don't understand is why you would ever shorten Caitlin to Katie because it's the same... Same number of syllables. Yes. Caitlin. I've never yeah. heard of Caitlin being shortened to Katie. Neither have I. Yeah. But I guess and, you're Andrew and everyone calls you Andy. It's the same and, thing. And to be to be fair, if you're going to shorten Caitlin to a one syllable word, it would be Kate. K-A-T-E, right? Yeah. Wouldn't that just be Or no, logical? it would be K-A-I-T. <laughs> 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 okay. Anyway, we got a lot of messages about that. Yeah. And Andy here, during this one-on-one time, they were mostly just making out. I asked you, Andy, if it would be your dream to be The Bachelor, just because you get to make out with all these women. And you Mm. said, no, it's too stressful. It's too much. I got to think about too much stuff. I got to make too many people happy. I got to watch out what I say. I got to watch out what I do. Mm. I got to, everyone, there's millions of people watching every move I make. Yeah. And also, I prefer the hunt. Yeah. I don't want, it's like a zoo animal. Like, who's getting thrown like me to some lion who's just like, uh. (laughs) I don't want to be that long. It's less satisfying yeah. if you didn't have to hunt for it yourself. Yeah, I want to be in the Serengeti, you mm. know, just finding that like slightly less fast zebra. I <laughs> slightly less fast zebra. <laughs> they go for babies and they go for weak. Yeah. And they go for slow. <laughs> So for me, I feel like I wouldn't be into it, A, because I could never fake it with someone I'm not genuinely into. Yeah. And B, I don't want this automatic adoration for me just based on my like the title I hold in that situation. Because a lot of my interest in someone else depends on their genuine interest in me, their genuine interest right. in me. Well, I, I agree. I would feel shame. Yes. In addition to the stress and all the other things I mentioned, I would feel shame. I'd be like, this is embarrassing. Like, of course, everyone's going to like me. No one's going to be like, no, I don't like that guy. I'm going to go for somebody else. <laughs> Like Wait, they're all going to like me. Are we bringing it back to shame again? Yes. It all comes back <laughs> it to It really shame. does. At least on Dear Shandy, it does. Okay. So now we have a montage with Anastasia Charity. And now Jess has one on one time. She asks to know something unique about Zach that only she would know out of the group. And he reveals he was born with pyloric stenosis. Mm-hmm. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And his mom really fought for him to live. And therefore, it has given him a sense of purpose in life. And you and I were ready to hear a whole lot more about this. And she's like, thanks for sharing that with me. (laughs) You could have said anything. I like watercolors. Thanks for sharing. He was probably expecting like a whole litany of questions. And he's like, oh, okay, moving on. It felt a little dismissive, but I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt and assume that it was cut, that she did ask more and it was cut. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. No? Maybe. Okay. We see a bit of Gabby now feeling insecure about falling behind and hearing the others all talk about their one-on-one time. Meanwhile, she hasn't talked to him since her limo exit. Ooh. She didn't have one-on-one time on the night one. And now back at the mansion, we cut to Genevieve and Brooklyn talking. And Brooklyn says she thinks some girls are sharing too much. This sort of becomes a bit of a theme in this episode. It begins, yeah. It's interesting because I remember hearing that conversation about the tongue kissing stuff and being like, that's like really it's pushing it that's yeah and i actually love girl talk where it's like oh let's reveal probably too much information but we're close but in this case they're all kissing the same guy they're talking about the same tongue the same tongue (laughs) i mean i get it there's always going to be a minority at least a minority of girls on the show who are not comfortable talking about that yes you can't expect every single cast member to be like yeah let's talk about the tongue that's going in the same mouth (laughs) tongues are pretty cool Tongues are insane. They're so cool. Sometimes it gets me a little uncomfortable thinking about tongues. I actually think tongues are some of the most like alien things about our bodies. They are. I mean, they're very unusual. They're very different than all the other parts of our body. You know, when we talk about like eagle eye. Yeah. Like eagle's vision is insane. From like 300 meters up, they can see like what species of mice is running through the grass. It's crazy. Yeah. And the dogs can smell something. They could smell like a piece of their owner's dirty underwear like a mile away. It's nuts. <laughs> okay. But our taste blows all of them away. Really? Like they would be like, wow. They would be, oh, Eagle would hear about our taste and be like, I can't even deal with that. Wait, are you serious? So yeah. we have a better sense of taste than any animal? I mean, I can't, I'm not. Like, oh, I'm not, people are going to fact <laughs> check you. I'm not an animalologist, <laughs> but I will say that our taste, but I would say compete with anything on earth. We have an entire industry 
a, a gastronomic industry. The whole, like, what do people do mostly in yeah. their recreation time? They go to restaurants. Yeah. We have, an, there's the million restaurants. So in conclusion, tongues are amazing. And very strong, by the way. Oh, I think. Very strong. I think about my tongue a lot because of singing. You know that yeah, your you, tongue is the root of a lot of singing issues? I have the things you do with your tongue in singing are amazing. <laughs> All right. So back on the date, Gabby finally has her one-on-one -on -one time. She starts word vomiting pretty much immediately. And it seems to feel a bit more like a speech than a conversation. Like she's like, here's my life story. Yeah. Very few questions asked. Mm -hmm. And afterwards you can tell she doesn't feel good about it. She was like, I was trying to get it all out there. It felt like the Gabby show. I really liked her self-awareness in this. Yeah. Because a lot of people might do that and then be like, why didn't I get the group date, Rose? No. And she was like, oh, I think I spoke too much. Like She knew immediately what she had done. Yeah. And Andy, you said in this moment that you like Gabby. I liked her a lot. Yeah. Felt very real. Yeah. We agreed that Gabby seems smart. And I also like, what, what was the thing she said right before, like, where they cut from her crying? She said she was about to say, I think piece of shit, but she <laughs> censored herself. What, did, yeah, what, I forget. what was it? She was like, I don't want to feel like a, an invisible person. Yeah. <laughs> Something like so it wasn't invisible, it was, it was something cute. like that. She was about, she's like, Oh, I can't cuss on the TV. <laughs> okay, so Zach gives this group date rose to Jess. So, yeah. so far, Andy, our predictions are going strong. Yeah, I don't know if they were that I mean, they're, unique. Yeah. <laughs> okay, mm. so now it's the next day, so the day of the rose ceremony. And props to Davia here for wearing Velcro rollers on camera. I was, I had to point this out. Well, it's pretty cool. It's a very 50s vibe going on. Yes. There. And I said, because I wore hot rollers all the time on yeah. my season, not Velcro rollers, but hot rollers. And I said in this moment, I didn't have the balls to do that. And Andy, I'm going to throw you under the bus because uh. you said something very bad. Uh. You responded with, but she looks good in them. Okay. Now, <laughs> no, no, I'm coming to my defense. <laughs> Those, that was not a correlation. It, the, the, the thing that I am guilty of is not fully listening to what you were saying. Yes, it's okay. I was moving on to my next thought before I listened to you. It was not comparing. You look very cute in hot rollers. Very. I knew what you meant. It was just funny. It was, it was one of those like foot in mouth husband moments. Yeah. So we have the rose ceremony cocktail party now. I said to you, we paused and I was like, I have a prediction. I was all on my high horse. Oh, yeah. And your predictions, to be fair, are usually, usually right on the money. Yes. And I think it says something about the season that I ended up being so wrong. Throwing us for a loop. I wrote it down. I said, Gabby will either have to make a fool of herself to get one-on-one -on -one time because she'll be so insecure yeah. or it will be maneuvered out of her reach for the whole evening and it'll result in her unraveling further for drama mm -hmm. and then she'll still get the rose probably last. Or at, second to last. Yeah, at the rose ceremony to, to freak her out even more to ensure that we get at least one more meltdown out of her next week. Mm -hmm. And I ended up being so wrong about this so wrong. that it made the entire season more interesting to me. Yeah. Because curveballs, yes. things we don't expect. Why do people want to see the things they expect? Yeah. No one wants to see that. Yeah. That you, if anything, you watch reality TV specifically to not see the things you expect. Yes. Very good. Unless you watch the Kardashians. Well, we, <laughs> we, last week we said that it felt so stuck, which in some ways I do think it is, but there were several small choices made in this episode that I was like, yeah, that's different. Like, I can't really believe that I'm saying this right now, but I really did enjoy it. And no one's happier than me about being wrong about that first episode. Well, no, sorry, I about, don't think we were wrong about no, that first right. episode. No, you're right. I was right about the first episode. <laughs> what I'm saying is being wrong about this season. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. so happy. So far, based on episode two, I think maybe we were wrong about this yeah, season. I but misjudged. I don't think we were wrong about episode one. Episode no. one was rough. Episode one sucks. Yes. And episode two is good. It's decent. No, I'm giving it good. Oh, I am giving it okay. a slightly above average good. Wow. Okay, so Zach enters and during his speech commends Christina Mendrell for doing a difficult thing and meeting his family. This was such a strange choice. Christina Mandrell is sort of embarrassed and reveals she hadn't told oh, yeah, anyone that's right. this. Uh, By the way, it stood out to me that she hadn't told anyone. It means that she's not a braggart. True. Because that would be an easy thing to brag about. Oh my God, she could have come back in the house and be like, guess what yeah, I yeah. did. <laughs> yeah. That's what Tejuan would have done. <laughs> yeah, I was impressed by this. I would have thought Christina Mandrell would be the type. It shows that I'm wrong. I'm I wrong. like Christina I love being Mandrell. Wrong. I don't want to, but I really like Christina yeah, Mandrell. Yeah, same. So Brianna, meanwhile, seems affected by this information. And what I don't understand is, was Zach told to reveal this? 
like during a speech, it's like, oh, you should call women out for doing things well that week and standing out to you in some way. It just felt like such a weird thing to be like, cheers, everyone, to a great week of dates. And Christina, for meeting my family, you really knocked it out of the park. It was such a strange it's thing. It's possible that producers told him to say that and he didn't think about why that would be weird. Like yeah. he's just like, oh, yeah, that's a good thing to say. Yeah. And they were like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Gabby has one-on-one -on -one time. So I was extremely wrong. Totally wrong. She first. says she appreciates him making time to speak with every girl, mm -hmm. which yeah. does take effort, by the way, because they go out of their way to make sure the lead doesn't speak with everyone. That's true. And he says he gets butterflies with her. And she says she remembers he likes peanut butter cups and presents him with a jar of them. And they lady and the tramp it. Mm -hmm. Gets the job done. <laughs> okay, so Brooklyn has one-on-one -on -one time now where she teaches him how to lasso. And she lassos Ooh. this fake bull thing herself. That was and it's bad unbelievable. Ass. Oh, my God. We were amazed. And during the one-on-one -on -one time. I mean, that's a bad bitch. <laughs> yes. Right? I was amazed. It was so, like... I don't have, how do I word this? Like it, it was really articulated. It was yes. It was yeah. like, like it was yeah. so, yeah, taut. It wasn't lucky. It wasn't like it just fell there and she pulled it. It was like, boom. Yes. It was very specific. Yeah. That was, that was Oof, hardcore. Yes. Rodeo's not that nice though. What? It's not that nice. What? It's just not nice. What is it? It's animals. Oh. Yeah. I feel bad saying it. I, I have to defend my sweet innocent animals. Aww. It's not nice. I wouldn't want to get lassoed. Would you? No. No one wants to get lassoed. Oh, Andy, that's so cute. It's mm. animals. It's animals. But she's still, it's still cool, but I'm a little, it's, a, it's, a, it's an asterisk. <laughs> an aster what? An asterisk. An asterisk. Good. I always get that wrong. Yeah. There's three things. There's asterisk, asterisk, and asterisk. Yeah. What's asterisk? That's a character from a... It's from a French cartoon. From a French cartoon about like guys from the Middle Ages. I always think of the adventures of... Tintin. Tintin. No, Tintin's different, but similar I know, genre. So that's what I'm, yeah, that's what I yeah. associate it with. I was a huge Tintin fan as a kid. You know what I liked was Barba Papa. I love Barbara Papa. They were so fun and big right? and colorful. Oh, I wish I could go back to those times. I wish you and me could just sit around reading Babar and Tintin and Babar. What, what are you calling Babar. it? Babar. Barba Papa was something else. Oh, then I don't know that. <laughs> Three extra syllables at the end of that, and you just ignore I'm them. Just, yeah, <laughs> I was like, "Bye, bye." So, Andy, I have a bone to pick with laundry detergent. I think I know what bone you're talking about. Oh yeah, yeah. What is it? What's the bone? The water. Yes. Do you know that most of the time when you buy a jug of laundry detergent, it's like ninety percent water? Think about just the resources being used to just ship that around, and then also that jug. How many of those get recycled? 91% of them do not. 700 million detergent jugs end up in landfill every year. 700 million. That's messed up. That's actually super messed up. Yeah. Because it, you don't think about that. Whenever I buy detergent, I'm not like, this is really bad for the environment. You're no. just like, oh, I'm cleaning my clothes. And it's not just that. As we mentioned, do you know how much fuel it takes to cart like 50 yes. tons of water in every truck? everywhere yeah and all of those households have water so this is why we're such big fans of earth breeze watch as i bring out these detergent sheets i'm um, obsessed with these unbelievable that's it this that's it. it i really love these so we're on the road right now i cannot stress this enough i've said before on the podcast that one of my biggest peeves about being an opera singer and traveling is having to repurchase like household supplies over and over again almost every place i go on the road i have to buy laundry detergent I'm not going to ship or like yeah, pack you're and bring and a giant jug yeah, of laundry like, exactly. detergent. Exactly. I'm not going to check a suitcase, but I'm living somewhere for a month or more. I'm going to need to wash my clothes. This has changed my life. This takes up no space in your luggage. Like literally, no. it takes up the space that you can't fill, like in between clothing. Yes. I brought, let me think, six of these. I've already used up four. I'm obsessed with them. And by the way, they're good. Yes. Let's just not, oh, yeah, let's yeah, not yeah, focus right. all on the environmental yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah. They're actually really good. Totally. They clean your clothes super well. And they're this. This is it. This is the footprint they take up. How is this just coming around now? I don't know. So beyond the 
obvious environmental friendliness of the sheets themselves. The packaging itself is compact, biodegradable, and plastic free. And their eco sheets are vegan, cruelty free, and safe for sensitive skin, which I have an issue with all the time. I was about to say, this is a big issue for us. We've had to sort of shop around for laundry detergent because you have really sensitive skin on your body. And if I clean your white v-necks with the yeah, wrong detergent- you get a scolding. Yeah, I do get a scolding. Like yeah. you get like rash issues. I got issues. And this stuff is amazing with the laundry. It's amazing. like unbelievable. There's nothing bad to say about these sheets. The I'm only bad thing is we're just hearing about it now. So now is the time to try Earth Breeze because our listeners, the Shandies, can save a whopping 40%. Go to earthbreeze.com slash Shandy to get started. That's earthbreeze, E-A-R-T-H-B-R-E-E-Z-E dot com slash Shandy to save 40%. Earthbreeze.com slash Shandy. Andy. Well, Andy, one of the necessities of being a human is a grooming, looking after ourselves, staying mm. clean, bathing, yeah. doing all the things. Yeah. And up there for me is skincare. Creaming. I find that the more I look after my skin, the less makeup I have to wear because the base, the baseline is looking its best. I think people are in better moods when their skin is oh, better. so true. When I have like a breakout I'm like a different person. It yeah. doesn't represent me properly. Absolutely. Me too. If I feel like I have any ruddiness on my face mm. or kind of like maybe a little rashiness, mm -hmm. I just get cranky. I feel it l lacking in confidence. Yes. And so wouldn't it be so nice to have access to board certified dermatologists who can help solve your skin issues? It would be great. Can I do that? <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, you can. Because apostrophe, basically you fill out their online consultation and you take selfies of your skin. You talk about what your skincare concerns are. And then a board certified dermatologist will review that information and prescribe you prescription, medication, oral or topical if they feel you need it. And you don't need to go to the doctor mm -hmm. and you don't need to go to the pharmacy. Yeah, because that prescription is delivered directly to your door. Can you imagine a bigger time saver? No. And money saver. Don't forget. Money saver because dermatologists, especially in New York City, are no joke. Yeah, they make a good living. They do. And if acne is your concern, it's not just for the face. They can also treat chest knee, back knee, and butt knee. So we have a very special deal for our audience, the Shandies. Get your first visit with an apostrophe provider for only $5 when you go to apostrophe.com slash Shandy and use our code Shandy. That is a savings of $15 and this offer is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash Shandy and click get started. Then use our code Shandy at sign up and you'll get your first visit for only $5. And we thank Apostrophe for sponsoring the podcast. Okay, so now we get a montage of one-on-one -on -one time, including Zach giving Katie poutine fries. Mm, but you don't say fries at your poutine. Yes, good catch, Andy. That was a giveaway. That yes. was like if she was a spy and she spoke perfect Canadian English, yeah. I'd be like, oh, she's a spy. Yeah. No one says poutine fries. It's like in Inglorious Bastards yeah. when he goes like this. He goes this instead, instead of yes. this. Okay, so now we see more of Brianna unraveling. She claims Christina made a mean comment to her. And now we see a flashback in the sepia tone of Christina Mandrell jokingly telling Brianna that she hates her. Okay. Oh my God. Oh my God. We have a big reaction oh to this. Oh boy. This was so wow. frustrating. Holy cow. I remember what the hell? I remember seeing this scene last week. They made a point of showing it. And thinking actually Christina was being that really was nice to endearing. her. That was endearing. That was the most, that was when I was like, oh, I actually kind of like this Yeah, girl. and it's, it was so obviously coming from a place of like, you're so, so like, you're obvious. in a great position, like, oh, and you've got a rose dress and like, oh, I hate you. You're, you know what I mean? It was just so clearly sarcastic. That's actually more of a compliment than if you just said, that's a really nice dress, which that could be, you could be like under your breath, like dress is ugly. <laughs> but if you say, I hate you mm -hmm. because of that dress, that means you really do like it and you're not lying. It's more of a compliment that she said, I hate you. We were blown away by Brianna choosing this. Like she picked this battle. She doesn't have and a it's clue. it's such a strange choice. And I, I'm hoping that there was a power that be behind the scenes that maybe, you know, notice she felt a little ruffled by that and maybe like stoked that fire. But wow, this was a strange choice. Brianna now confronts Christina Mandrell and she says she didn't know if this was going to be a safe environment coming in. Christina Mandrell takes it like a champ. She apologizes immediately. Jesus level. <laughs> like what the, I would have been like, bitch. <laughs> 
She asks what the specific comment was. She apologizes before even hearing it. She's like, I'm so sorry that, you know, that I made you feel bad. Like, can I ask what I said? Oh, my Christina Mandrell. Yeah, I know. And then she says she doesn't recall saying it, but understands now that it has been explained to her why it was her Unbelievable. Fault. Brianna says, Ahem. I'm choosing to believe that you don't remember. And I'm choosing to believe that there was no malicious intent. I'm choosing to believe that I want her off the show as soon as possible. She says she's going to have to see action in order for them to be friends. This just showed such a, like, a misunderstanding. I don't even know. Do you think that this was a misunderstanding on Brianna's part? Like, how could you not see? in As a 24, she's 24. As a 24-year-old in today's day and age, she's living in the States, like, where sarcasm is a very, you know, everyone speaks sarcasm to some degree. It's To me, it's obvious that this was, like, colloquial humor. It was a compliment disguised as an insult. The only excuse I'll give her, and I don't think this is the case, is if she literally just came to this country from another culture, mm. from, you know, somewhere like on the other side of the world mm-hmm. where they don't do sarcasm or they don't do it that way. Yeah. And she said that. So Germany. In- yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I always, I always just you love, Yeah, you really, sarcasm. come on. But you also love Germany, anyway, <laughs> sort of. So if that was the case, okay, even so, in context... It makes no sense. But all the other things were compliments. Yes. Her tone of voice, the body language. She wasn't meaning this meanly. It makes no sense. It's literally like you go to a restaurant and you get a steaming pile of horse shit on your plate. It's literally, there's no, it's not like, you know, an homage to horse shit. It's literal (laughs) horse shit. Everyone in the restaurant smells it. They start leaving. Uh And on the top of it is a cherry. And you say to your your dining partner, you're like, oh, you give it a chance. I mean, that cherry looks delicious. (laughs) How is it like that? (laughs) I'm really dying to know how that's connected. I I, I can do this. It is like that. Okay. Because the cherry is a good cherry. It's it's a a solid cherry. A fresh cherry. Delicious cherry. Delicious. Still got the stem on it. Okay. And it's it's horseshit. What Christina Mandrell did was the inverse of this horseshit with cherry on top. Okay. She basically... Had all cherries, but there was horseshit. It's on reverse. It's, it's, an anal- it's an inverse analogy. You get the point? Do you understand? I somehow kind of do. She gave her all cherries, yeah. and then there was a little horseshit yeah, on top. It was a top. bit of spice. Yeah. It was showing insecurity on her part. Yeah, the horseshit She was like, oh, you, you're, you're so beautiful. Your dress is so nice. You have a rose. I don't have any of these things. I hate you. Yeah. Ha, 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 because it's funny. I don't understand. Why are we this. even talking about this? I know. This? I, how could anyone disagree with us on this? What's so weird is that in the previews they suggest that Christina Mandrell is the bitch, but I mean, why do I trust previews? Okay, so Brianna has one-on-one time now. She reveals one person hasn't been nice to her, and she says to Zach, "Do you want to know who it is?" Unbelievable! She's throwing her under. This is Judas level. It's like <laughs> she's throwing her under the bus for her kindness. Mm. She's paving the road to hell. I do think it's... No, no, Christina paved... Wait, the road (laughs) to hell is paved with good intentions. Who's paving that road? Who paved the road? I don't know. (laughs) Okay, well, it's paved with that, and she's sending her straight to hell. Well, it's possible. I don't think this makes a difference in the paving of the road to hell, but I think it's possible that Brianna talked to Zach before Brianna talked to... Christina Mandrell. I think it's possible this aired out of order, but I honestly don't think it makes a difference. Does it make a difference? I think it's so inappropriate for Brianna to do this. And she says, do you want to know who it is? Oh. And she clearly wants him to want to know. But Zach, in true Verzaki fashion, says, if you want to share... If it's something that needs to be shared, I am someone who doesn't like drama at all. But if it needs to be brought up or if it's already been handled, that's great, too. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) He was just like, no, I don't want to know. And to Brianna's credit, she gets the hint and she's like, "Okay, okay, okay, I won't tell you. If it's already been handled, that's okay too. Yeah. That's to me, we have Versace. Yes. He doesn't want to hear it. I got to say, this is as refreshing as him being honest about the this is the great. daughter thing. He's so, I, I feel I got egg on my face. I'll take it. I like yeah. it. It feels good. <laughs> the yolk is dripping. It feels hot and warm and refreshing. Why is it warm? Because it's fresh. Someone just fried an egg and threw it in my face. 
the egg was just laid. Oh, yeah. It's not an old egg. Someone wasn't thinking about it. They were like, I got to get this egg cooked fast to get on Andy's face. So Brianna gets the hint and she's like, OK, I won't give you any names. But then she continues to talk about it. She says that this person was so nasty to her and describes the whole scene. And Zach's like, OK, that would be annoying. But then Zach becoming even more Verzaki by the minute, Mm -hmm. says this is instead of taking the bait, because he could easily be like, okay, tell me who it is. I'm going to confront her. That would be a very like Peter Weber thing to do. I know you didn't see that season, but to me, like the poster child bachelor of kind of running around with his head cut off and like a chicken with its head cut off. What did you call it? I said running around with his head cut off. Oh, just <laughs> any any animal with its head cut off? Yeah. So he doesn't take the bait. And now Zach turns it on Brianna. He says that he feels like she has a lot of walls up mm-hmm. and their conversations haven't felt fun. Mm-hmm. They've in fact felt strict nice. and serious. Thank you. Verzaki has been Professional. Professional. They yes. were professional. Could you imagine... If you just met somebody that you want, like, this is a first date. It's yeah. like, hi, nice. Are you this person? It's like a blind date. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, sit down. And you right away do all the things Rihanna's done. Yeah. How fun would that be? You would You'd run. You'd be like, I, oh, I got a, I got a, I got a stomach situation. I worry that Brianna is very manipulatable. Manipulatable. Is that what it is? Manipulatable. Manipulatable. <laughs> I think, I think there's a word for that that's not manipulatable. Malleable? No. <laughs> Malleable. Is it malleable? It's malleable. Are you sure? Yeah, malleable. <laughs> kind of. It's somewhat. It's mostly. Because later on, during the rose ceremony, we get an ITM of Brianna saying that she could have a great relationship with Zach, but he hasn't given her a chance. Unreal. Yeah. That's- it's his job to give her a chance after all the chances she's had. She got the... What was it called? <laughs> the audience first impression. Audience. Yeah. I don't know why that's in quotes. I don't know why either. She got that. Yeah. She's been given a lot of advantages. Yeah. He hasn't given her time. She's gotten plenty of time and she hasn't used it well. Yes. Period. Yeah. She uses it badly. It's the lack of ownership yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. So we have a rose ceremony now. I don't need to go through all the names of people getting roses, but going home are Victoria, Kat, and Kimberly. Hmm. Also a little sad to see Kat go. She was fun. She had the, all the expressions. You know, she was like the Justin. What's the Justin, right? Yes. Justin. She was the Justin of the season. Justin, a.k.a. your mom's favorite. That's right. Still talks about <laughs> talks about him and... Aaron. <laughs> okay, so now we have our credits under the episode. Victoria asks about farting in relationships. Catherine and Anastasia are passionate saying that there's a barrier. You don't fart in front of your partner and everyone else is like, but it's natural. Hmm. And... Andy, you said they're getting better at those. They're getting better at these scenes. Yeah. And at the credits. That's what I want to hear. America wants to hear a bunch of girls talking about farting. (laughs) Maybe we should be crediting the cast. Yeah, it's the cast. I'm giving full credit to the cast. Yeah, if for some reason you're just one of those people that only listens to recaps, we no. have a good Q and A that talks Q&As. about farting. So I'll yeah, leave it here. We have a great farting Q and A. <laughs> okay, so Andy, now it's time for your A game. Who is this week's winner? I'm going to give it to Ariel. 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 Isn't that her name? It's Ariel, I thought. Ariel. Oh. Oh, Ariel? Because I thought Ariel would be A-R-I-E-L-L-E. Oh, it's not? That's how I thought it was spelled. No, it's spelled Ariel like... A-R-I-E-L? Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Don't tell me you've forgotten this. Wouldn't you think... Wouldn't you think I'm the girl? The girl who has everything. Look at this trope. Wait. But do the just go to the chorus. I've got gadgets and gizmos aplenty. I've got oozits and what's its galore. You want thingamabobs? I've got twenty. But who cares? Oh, I know what this no is. No big deal. I want more. No, I know. It's the one with the nanny from England. <laughs> That's not. So you think that what I just sang was just a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go oh, down, yeah, helps no, the medicine. No, now I realize I'm wrong. Yeah. So what was what's the nanny from England? Um, Mary Poppins. Good. Okay. <laughs> so what was the first one? I want more. I want to be where the people are. I want to see. Want to oh, see. Oh, this is dancing. this is Aladdin. <laughs> Walking around on those. What do you call them? Feet, Magic carpets. Okay. feet, up where they walk, up where they run, up where they stay all day in the sun. Frozen. <laughs> we've done this. You, you, we've done this before. She wants feet. 
Oh, she doesn't have feet. She's a fish. A fish called Wanda. <laughs> Wait, that's a movie. What? No, I meant not, not a fish called Wanda. She's a fish, right? She's a mermaid. Yeah. I, I, that's sorry. We've done this. This has all happened The before. mermaid is the little mermaid. Yeah, and her name is? Ariel. Yeah. Woo. I basically got that. <laughs> We've had this entire scene I went from Mary Poppins to Little Mermaid. That's 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 a I've a big sung leap. this exact song before, and you also said Aladdin then. My memory's not what it used to be, I'll be honest. <laughs> okay, so why did Ariel get your A game? I thought she was very cool. 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 Ariel is cool. She is cool. Isn't it funny? She's just innately cool. She her is. voice. It's her voice. She's got a cool voice. There's not a lot of fluff in what she does. Not like a lot of nervous laughter or a lot of likes or mm. literally. She's you pretty know cool. She kind of reminds me of another friend of the pod, Jacqueline Trumbull. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there is a Trumbull vibe. To yeah, her. who's also very sultry, by the way. Mm. Her move with the biggest fear of not getting kissed by Zach that night was that was a game. That was true. It also yeah. felt kind of out of character for her. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah, she she both played into the Bachelor formula, but also broke it. Oh, that's such a good way of putting it. Yes. So something about Ariel just sort of stands yeah. out as not really being a Bachelor girl, I suppose. But it's like, well, I'm on The Bachelor, so I'll do a kind of bachelor yeah, thing. Yeah, it's a wink. Yes, it felt like a wink. Yeah. Well put. All right, Andy, for our word watch, there were three best friends. Mm. And how many correct guesses? 145. Okay, and our winner is... Heather Kim McKinney, congratulations. You win $100 to Furano Studio in, yeah. on Etsy, one of my all-time favorite jewelry shops. So be sure to email us by this Friday at midnight to claim your prize. Mm -hmm. And Andy, for next week, do you have a word in mind? I do. And that word is family. Ooh. I feel like... That might be a lot. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I forgive you. It's not literally. It's better than literally. Oh, yeah. So if you would like a chance to win, we have a new prize this week, $100 to Frankly Apparel. You've seen us advertise Frankly many times. I have many Frankly Apparel pieces. Lovely, small, woman-owned business. Mm -hmm. They are Shandies, the owners. Mm -hmm. And their clothes have bras built into them. They're basically designed so you don't need to wear a bra, which is just delightful. And so you can win $100 to spend to Frankly Apparel by... Guessing correctly the number of times you predict the word family will be uttered in episode three. Mm -hmm. You will submit your guess by commenting either below this YouTube video or over on Instagram the number of times you think it'll be uttered. You'll use the numeral. You will not write out six. You will just use a six. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that's your guess. Mm -hmm. And you must include either family or word watch in your comment, or you can use both. And you must do so by this Friday at midnight. And then if you guess correctly, you will be entered in a pile mm, of a correct guessers pile, and one winner will be drawn from that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Moving on. Well done. All right. Finally, Andy, our predictions. Who do you have in your top spot based on episode mm. two? I am bumping Greer. Damn. And I'm moving up Catherine. Okay. So switching them basically. Yeah. Wait, you had her. Yeah. You had her in second last week. Okay, so Catherine, number one, yeah. I agree. I also Ooh. put her in that top spot. That chemistry. Yeah. And Can't good. Deny uh, it. Yeah, that it was so like sexy, the mm. build up to it. There didn't need to be this intro or contract signing of like, oh, I'm yeah. going to kiss you now. No. I would like to be kissed no, right you're now. You're not my friend. We're kissing. You're yes, we are. You're not my friend. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. Not now, not for the next 30, 40 seconds. <laughs> I think Zach is extremely attracted to Catherine and their connection will grow. Mm. <laughs> it will grow. <laughs> okay, so who do you have in your second spot? I got Greer. Okay. I also have Greer. We didn't see much of Greer this week, but it's very typical of the first impression rose not to get much airtime in week two. So, okay. Yeah. All right. So in your third spot, this is where we start to veer off from each other. Who do you have? I got Katie. You got Katie? I got Katie. And can you explain why? I just feel like there's a, a undeniable chemistry there. Yeah. He likes her. She likes him. I mean, obviously she likes him, technically. Honestly, I'm having a really hard time with my third spot because I have Jess in my third spot, but I really kind of want to put Katie in mm. there. Yeah. First of all, she's Canadian. Mm. So, you know, yeah, she's I, I Canadians tend to do well on this show. They we'll do. just put it that way. They really do. And she has such a positive, she's gorgeous, but she has this really like positive yeah. energy. Joie de vivre. A joie de vivre. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stick with Jess, you but with Jess. I fine. kind of want to put Katie in there. It's okay. Fine. So who do you have in your fourth spot? I got Jess. Okay. And in my fourth spot, I have Ariel. 
Oh, I, I like mean, that. She, she was my wild card last I was week. weighing between Jess and Ariel. I don't know if I'm falling for it, putting Jess. I put her in third last week, too. I just can't really. I've got Jess hanging on by a fingernail in fourth. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Jess, I'm, I feel like that might wane. Yeah. We talked last week about how we think Zach needs a little spice. And I f- Jess might be a little too yeah. squeaky clean. Unspicy. Unspicy. But, you know, may, there's more maybe to be seen there. Maybe. Okay, that's it. Yeah. We're done. We're done. Yeah, episode two. Episode two is always the hardest. Yeah, we always struggle with episode two of any always. season. Yeah. And it didn't help, too, that we kind of liked the episode. We have a I harder know. time. <laughs> it's <laughs> very bad when we like the episode. <laughs> Nothing's worse than being entertained. <laughs> The more entertained we are, the less entertained you are. Sorry. (laughs) If you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what we will ask of you, and that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram and TikTok, leave us Apple and Spotify, podcast ratings and reviews, and tell your friends. Tell your friends. That's the biggest one of all. Don't be shy. Generally do all of the things that you would do to support a podcast that you enjoy. Thank you so much, and we will see you next week for episode three here on Dear Shandy. Bye-bye. Shandy. You shouldn't have to feel like a worthless person.